the voice of Sherry. Good morning. This is Arlene. You are listening to the ASEAN Breakfast Call uh, in at our Durian ASEAN office, the voice of discovery and sharing. Today, we are going to start our beautiful morning with a reading of uh, the Southeast Asian news. Starting off with um, some Malaysian news first. Um, Diana Sofia, she's a young uprising star in uh, the DAP political party or the Democratic, um, um, sorry, the DAP political party. Uh, she is now uh, uh, currently uh, standing on the Telo Intan by election and she said that she is unfazed by the wolf whistling. Uh, the story is uh, the Teluk Intan by election candidate Diana Sofia Muhammad Daud told to the crowd that she's unfazed at the wolf whistling and that she gets during her campaigning rounds. Even, even she said that I think voters are smart enough to know what I can deliver rather than to focus on my looks. That's what she told on a press conference at one of her campaigns stop on Tuesday. In fact, uh, on her comments, uh, the 26-year-old Diana Yusuf, uh, Diana Sofia, said on past Hudub, who is meeting Gerakan Chief Datuk Mah Siu Kong in the May 31st poll, said would stick to her earlier statement of note voting for its implementation in Parliament. And on her being photographed with Perkasa Datuk Ibrahim Ali, Diana Sofia said, having the picture taken with him does not mean she agree with his ideology. In fact, she is extremely against uh, the ideology of Perkasa, she said. I think uh, on the bigger picture here, it's great that uh, she's speaking out that she's unfazed by the wolf whistling and she's unfazed that um, just because she's pictured with someone else doesn't mean that she really agree with what uh, the person uh, subscribed to, especially their ideology and their political interests. I think, in fact, uh, for a more matured political system, it would be a discourse on what is her policy agenda and what kind of uh, policy change that she could bring or at least the manifesto that she would want to convey towards the Telo Intan constitu constituent. Uh, if uh, she is able to... Uh, you know, read out loud her policy statement on what she can do uh, for the low intent constituency. I think that shows that uh, is it is we Malaysian has moved forward towards a more matured political um, uh, uh, political process or democracy in that sense, rather than uh, wolf whistling and all that. Um, I. Personally, I wish her the best for her campaigning and we really look forward to know more about uh, the, the issues that they will, uh, Diana, Sophia, as well as the other candidate from Gerakan, Datuk Mas Yukong, that will be bringing, that will bring forth uh, to the people and constituents of the Lo Intan. And secondly, we have another story about a Malaysian student and the person, uh, the student was being gang raped in Bandung. The Malaysian student in Panjajaran University in Indonesia who was gang raped in sta on Saturday is expected to return home for further treatment. In fact, um, that it was reported the student left her rented house in Bandung, not far from her. Jani Nangor Campus to withdraw money when an unknown man covered her mouth and pulled her into a car. The victim was found unconscious in a car park about 40 kilometers where, from where she was abducted, according to the report. In fact, the report said the student was in a trauma and treated uh, at the Hassan Sadikin Hospital in Bandung. Simahi Police Chief Erwin Kurnia once said four men had been abducted, her, three of whom took turns to rape her. Police are now waiting for medical reports before taking further action. We hope that um, 
the Malaysian students right now is in a better condition and we hope that the police in Bandung would be able to catch all the f men who um, uh, gang rape her. Next on is the 61 and as trainee display influenza-like symptoms. Um, so the story goes that the National Service trainees based at the Dusan Minda Resort in Kuala Nerang with influenza-like illness symptoms have risen by 7 to 61 num uh, number of persons and all the 61 students, including the four tested positive for the H1N1 virus on Saturday, have symptoms such as fever, flu, cough and sore throat. And the NS director, Dr. Abdul Haji Awang Kuchil, said parents should not be unduly worried as the medical team has uh, everything under control and the trainees now are safe. The person said that all the affected trainees are in an upbeat mood and our camp's medical team together with those from the district health department are monitoring their situation closely. He said when visiting the camp yesterday, adding that the cause of the virus was still unknown. The affected trainees are separated and placed in dorms within the camps that are above. 20, 220 meters away from the other trainees. The interesting question is, is the, uh, the symptoms that uh, the 61 students face, is it really influenza? And like symptom, uh, like symptom, or is it that uh, it is some, is an isolated case where um, they just so happen to have a symptom that is similar to influenza-like symptoms? Uh, we hope that uh, the medical team uh, in Malaysia can find soon, especially the health department there. And uh, move on to Singapore. Um, the story about the Singapore Prime Minister demands apology from, blo from blogger. Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong has demanded an apology from a local blogger for a posting for a posting that seems as accusing him of corruption, Lee's lawyer said. Lee, uh, sorry, lawyer Davin, sorry, lawyer Davinder Singh wrote to Roy um, Yi Ling on Sunday asking him to take down the original article as well as the links posted on Facebook and to post an apology by Wednesday. Singh said the allegation by Ngern in his May 15th 15 blog posts were false and baseless. Singh said the post constituted a serious libel against Lee, disparages him and impugns his character, credit and integrity. Healthcare worker Ngern, 33-year-old, regularly posts commentaries critical of the long-ruling People Action Party or PAP in his blog, The, ha the Hard Truth. Recent posts had called for greater transparency of how CPF funds are invested by the government through GIC and state investment firm Tamasi Holdings. She even said that um, my articles have been called have been calling for greater accountability and transparency and instead of acknowledging these issues, the Prime Minister had decided to ish to sue me. That's what she said, and in um, my in my opinion, I think um, what Ngeng is doing is something that is should be applaudable. Um, she's posting something that questioning how uh, the government actually used the fund and invested it. Um, uh, through GIC and state investment firm Temasek Holding and I think the people of Singapore have the right to know how these funds are being used since it is their money and it is their hard and um, uh, cash to begin with and also the second thing I think um, the right way to de handle with this situation instead of uh, forcing a local blogger for an apology. I think uh, the authority in Singapore should make um, um, should make a thorough, I would say, a thorough uh, investigation on this, whether it is true or is it a serious libel against Lee. Um, 
that should be the right way uh, for any country to um, uh, regulate and to control corruption. Um, and of course, uh, the important thing is, uh, is the country itself democratic uh, or is exercising real democracy or not? So that's another question to be answered. Uh, the next, uh, the next issue uh, we focus on Thailand. Thai army invokes martial law to quell unrest. So Thailand's army on Tuesday decided uh, to declare martial law across the crisis, cr sorry, the, across the crisis grip kingdom to res to restore order following months of anti-government protests that have left 28 people dead and hundreds wounded. An announcement on military-run television said martial law has been invoked to restore peace and order for people from all sides, stressing that the move is not a coup. The public do not need to panic but can still live their life as normal, uh, added by the military um, uh, sorry, added by the anti-government protest. Uh, sorry, added by the military itself. Uh, and wretched supporters of Ying Lak and her elder brother Taksin Sinawatra, who was disposed as premier in the 2006 coup, have warned of the threat of civil war if power is handed an unelected leader as demanded by the opposition. The country's embattled government was not consulted in advance about the imposition of martial law, said Paradon Patanatabut, Chief Security Advisor to Prime Minister Nong Tung Rong Bon Song Pai San. The caretaker government still exists with Nong Win Tung Rong as caretaker prime minister, everything is normal except the military is responsible for all national security issues. Anti-government demonstrators have vowed a final battle in the coming days to topple the prime minister. It seems like huge issue is happening here. The opposition, the military and also the uh, pro-government supporters. The question is, sh can they move beyond just uh, having a partisan mindset towards power uh, or, or against uh, the power, um, um, the, uh, the power, uh, sorry, um, is, this, is this the only way for uh, the politics to happening, the partisan politics between all these three different power to, to gain? Uh, or to maintain the power uh, itself, or should uh, the people itself focus on more than just uh, supporting either uh, the government in charge or the oppos uh, or the, po the opposition uh, power? Instead, focus more on the larger issue: what really the Thai people want, what in the long run that the Thai people would prefer to be. Um, ruled by, especially the states should serve for all people, not just for their own supporter or for a certain group of class of society or and people. So this is something that the sing uh, the sorry the Thai people should question themselves. But on the other hand, I see that uh, the military uh, is also interested uh, to be part of this uh, unrest. And hopefully that uh, all this crisis, crisis can go to a stop and something more can be done to restore peace and order for people from all sides rather than resulting in another coup. Historically, uh, Thailand uh, has been in coups by the military before. So hopefully there would be no more coup and would be uh, democracy will be something that Thai people can achieve in the very near future. The next one, we move to Vietnam. So China ship evacuates almost 2,000 people from Vietnam. Almost 2,000 Chinese citizens were evacuated from riot-hit Vietnam by sea on Monday, with another two ships following, as Hanoi stifled fresh protests over a territorial dispute and Foreign invest investors counted the cost. The passenger vessel Wu Zhishan and 
Dong Gu Ling left the central Vietnamese port of Vang An, each with more than 900 evacuees, evacuees on board, China's official news agency Xinhua reported on it. Workers voiced release as they boarded the vessel. The agency reported with some declaring, finally home. <laughs> Related between communist neighbours Vietnam and China have plummeted um, sorry, relations between communist neighbours Vietnam and China have plummeted bef following Beijing's move this month to send a deep water drilling rig into contested waters in South China Sea. Two Chinese nationals were killed and about 140 injured when enraged mobs torched or otherwise damaged hundreds of foreign-owned businesses in Vietnam last week. The situation has returned to normal now, the official Vietnam news agency said. I think this is a, a real situation that uh, ASEAN especially need to focus on because the, security, the maritime security between China and uh, Southeast Asia, especially the country affected, which is uh, Vietnam and, of course, the Philippines as well, uh, is in high alert. In, so in that sense, uh, the South China Sea is something that uh, is the South China Sea issues, um, especially on the security, that is something that both powers, uh, the ASEAN as well as China, need to really sit down and talk about it. Although the Court on Conduct has been proposed by the US on this, but also at the same time to avoid any future military disputes if it ever happened, it's better that a peaceful negotiation to happen between China and Southeast Asia countries Moving on to the, uh, the Inquirer, uh, it's an international news. Uh, Snowden leaks bears U.S. spying on Philippines text messages. Uh, as I mentioned about the Philippines, uh, the Philippines is among the countries being secretly monitored by a telecommunications spying program of the U.S. National Security Agency, or the NSA, as revealed by whistleblower and fugitive Edwin Snowden. Online publications to intercept a platform releasing Snowden's leaks alleged in a post on Tuesday uh, on Manila time that the NSA's Cutting Edge Surveillance Program, or MySTIC, collects metadata and content and from mobile networks in Caribbean, Mexico, Kenya, the Philippines, and another unnamed country. All told, the NSA is using MySTIC to gather personal data on mobile calls placed in countries with a combined population of more than 250 million people. The Intercept writers Ryan Devereaux, Glenn Greenwald and Laura Poitras said in a report, metadata are information revealing message or calls time, stem, source and destination information collected by my state that may be authorised by the host country and even by the telecommunications firm itself. Philippine laws prohibit wiretapping and related violation not authorised by all parties concerned. Republic Act No. 4200 or the anti-wiretapping law, however, only covers the monitoring and interception of content. In February, the Supreme Court upheld penalties under the Assailed Republic Act 10175 or the Cyber Crime Prevention Act for those who aid and abet activities or illegal access, illegal interceptions, data interference and system interference, among others. Uh, the next one, we report a news on Myanmar, similarly uh, about China as well. On the New York Times, resentment of China spreading in Myanmar, a flare-up resilient hostility towards China among its neighbours has infected central Myanmar where a Chinese company operating a copper mine has local residents sitting over what they call the operator's arrogance and the project's seemingly unbridled expansion plans. The Chinese don't know our culture. How would they feel if their respected buildings were destroyed? That 
that statement was said by Tui Tui Win, a villagers who had fought the expansion of the mine. The conflict comes at a time where overlapping territorial claims between Beijing and its southern neighbors have resulted in rising tension and a case of Vietnam violence in which Chinese-owned businesses appear to have targeted. Chinese workers are strangers, said Wu Mian Tian, a resident of the nearby town of Mon sorry of Monua Monua. They don't know our local custom, so we feel they are arrogant. The copper mine has also been cited as a symbol in Myanmar of resentment towards China, which is accused of plundering timber and other natural resources from the Chinese uh, from the country. So it seems like there's a common resentment towards China and the Chinese people in a lot of the Southeast Asian country as reported earlier in Vietnam and now in Myanmar. So it seems like uh, Chinese has really expanded a lot, especially economically towards uh, and economically and in terms of their power as well um, in either South China Sea or in individual countries, uh, especially accusation on plundering their timber and other natural resources. That's all of our news today. Uh, thank you for listening to us. We will continue with another segment, Blast from the Grassroots. Thanks for listening to the ASEAN Breakfast Call. <laughs> 